These curious artifacts are tools of the pharmacist's trade from days gone by. They comprise a record of pharmaceutical history and remain with us now as quaint reminders of less complicated times. Though they cannot speak, they are full of meaning. If we stop for a moment to contemplate these relics, they may seem to come back to life, illuminating the long and significant history of pharmacy in Japan from the earliest days of the profession. Let us return to the latter half of the 1800s. Japan is at last emerging from centuries of isolation, enthusiastically assimilating new cultural influences from the industrialized nations of the West. It is the year 1874, and the Meiji Restoration is in full swing. The new imperial government institutes a modern Western style of medical and pharmaceutical practice, taking the place of ancient Chinese traditions. In 1886, a new pharmacopoeia appears. In the West, separation of the professions of medicine and pharmacy had long been a tradition in which doctors diagnosed maladies and pharmacists prepared the drugs used in their treatment. In 1900, the Japanese parliament entered into debate over a bill which, if passed, would separate these professions in Japan as well. At the time, however, there were fewer than 2,000 pharmacists in Japan, far outnumbered by the nation's 30,000 doctors. The bill was defeated due to the disruption in healthcare that doctors feared would ensue if separation of the two professions were to become law. Among those who were most disappointed upon hearing of the defeat was Shigenobu Onda. Shigenobu Onda was born in 1861 at Matsushiro in what is now Nagano Prefecture. His desire for higher education led him to Tokyo where, after tremendous perseverance, he graduated from the University of Tokyo with a degree in pharmaceutical science and became an army pharmacist. On behalf of his profession, he insisted, we need more students of pharmacy, more practicing pharmacists, and the profession has to be independent. But if this is going to happen, it will need my help. Shigenobu Onda put his plans into action. He established the Tokyo Professional School of Pharmacy at Kanda in Tokyo in 1902, marking the historical beginning of the Meiji College of Pharmacy. The school's co-founders included Shokichi Amamiya, Tsunesaburo Hatano, Kinsuke Kitano, and Moritaro Sugino. One issue of a journal of pharmacy published in 1902 included a detailed account of the school's opening and quoted at length from Professor Onda's lectures. For the rest of his life, Shigenobu Onda, founder of the Meiji College of Pharmacy, dedicated himself to the promotion of the study of pharmacy, thereby increasing the ranks of trained pharmacists in Japan. What sort of man was Professor Onda? Former student Monzaburo Ohara remembers. <laughs> Professor Onda was a very unassuming sort. He didn't care much for pretenses. For example, he was often to be seen here and there on the grounds, picking up litter and stuffing it into a trash basket slung over his shoulder. Visitors frequently came onto campus. One ran into Professor Onda on his cleanup detail, requesting to see the headmaster. 
Professor Onda replied that the headmaster was around somewhere, at which the visitor asked to be taken to his office. Well, Professor Onda dropped his trash basket, went to wash his hands, and, with the visitor following, walked nonchalantly into the office of the headmaster. The visitor looked at him and said, I'm not here to see you. I've come to visit the headmaster. To which Professor Onda answered, I am the headmaster. This story is just one example of the unassuming manner that Professor Onda was known and admired for. The fact was, however, that in those days Professor Onda busied himself with every aspect of the school's operation. He was not only the headmaster and lecturer, but also office clerk, errand boy, and sometimes, yes, even groundskeeper. When first opened, the school had only 14 students and was beset by every conceivable financial problem. Professor Onda used royalties earned from his own publications to help finance the school. In 1900, following years of work, the Encyclopedia of German-Japanese Translations pictured here was published by Professor Onda. Ogai Mori, a physician and celebrated figure in Meiji period literature, wrote in his preface to the work, In this book, my friend Shigenobu Onda translates a foreign language into our own. He has always been a dedicated scholar, and while translation has been more an avocation than a vocation for him, he has consistently sought the most accurate translations of terms, from meteorology to therapeutic procedures to the names of plants and animals. As a result of his dedication, this encyclopedia not only consists of accurate individual translations, but taken as a whole represents a significant accomplishment in and of itself. This book will, I am sure, prove useful not only to us, but to future generations. I am proud to be associated with Professor Onda and am pleased to dedicate this important work. Located in the city of Ome are the most complete archives of medical knowledge to be found in Japan, and here one may see Shigenobu Onda's Encyclopedia of German-Japanese Translations. Dr. Mori and Professor Onda first met while posted with the Japanese Army in Taiwan, following the Sino-Japanese War of 1894-95. Mori, a medical officer, and Onda, a pharmacist, first class, were the same age and got along well together. Dr. Mori also wrote the preface to the new complete German-Latin-Japanese Dictionary of Medicine a work which sold well among medical and pharmacy students and which was of particular use to Professor Onda in the training of pharmacists. Professor Onda proceeded on a prolific writing career, eventually the author of more than 40 works. In 1904, Japan went to war with Imperial Russia. Professor Onda was called to national service as an army pharmacist and obliged to leave his post at the newly opened school in Tokyo. This experience prompted him to point out that the nation must make provisions in the event that our pharmacists are called to military service overseas. We must make preparation by training women in the skills of pharmacy, meticulous work for which they are at least as well suited as their male counterparts. Toward this end, Professor Onda established the Tokyo Women's School of Pharmacy in 1907, an idea far in advance of its time, considering the fact that institutions for the training of women in the professions were all but non-existent in Japan. As Professor Onda anticipated, women enrolled at the school made excellent grades and achieved exemplary scores on the demanding national examination for pharmacists. The 
Tokyo Society of Women Pharmacists was established, while activities of the Women's Pharmacy School alumni included publication of an association journal. Professor Onda's lectures were enthusiastically attended by his students, due in large part to his patience, consideration, and energy. His students represented a broad range of ages and scholastic abilities. Since most of them worked day jobs and studied at night, it became necessary to find a way to ease their workload. Professor Onda's answer to the unique needs of his students was an ingenious one. He took the essential information provided in the table of qualitative analysis, which the students were expected to learn, and set it to the music of a popular song known as Rappabushi. ここに銀属分類性あとに残り白く液は生えす落ちつつ少し温めろかすべしここにどうぞ来たるらん Everyone was familiar with the melody, so Professor Onda substituted the original words of the song with the information from the text of the Table of Qualitative Analysis, and the resulting musical study aid made memorization a simple exercise for the students. <laughs> Professor Onda's tireless efforts were rewarded. By 1907, the school had graduated 217 students, of whom 137 went on to become certified pharmacists. But Professor Onda was not about to rest on his laurels. Embarked on a vigorous recruitment campaign, this is how he looked as he made his rounds every Sunday, distributing pamphlets to pharmacies and clinics alike. Here we see a sample of one of his pamphlets. An invitation to study pharmacy was widely circulated in an effort to stimulate interest in the profession. It was printed in full color, which was highly unusual at the time, and seemed much too nice to throw away, adding to its effectiveness as a promotional pamphlet. Here we see the 1924 Pharmacy Bulletin. Resolute challenges directed at the pharmaceutical establishment by Professor Onda met with stiff resistance from some quarters, and he became the object of virulent criticism. Shigenobu Onda was not, however, easily discouraged. Indifferent both to the praise and derision of the public, he persevered, bent on ensuring that his would be the finest school of pharmacy in Japan. At the time, Professor Onda had a dear friend in Tomitaro Makino. Dr. Tomitaro Makino, a name familiar to anyone who has studied plant science, was one of Japan's foremost botanists. At his friend's invitation, Dr. Makino lectured at the Meiji Professional School of Pharmacy. One student said of Dr. Makino's lectures that once the professor got started on the subject of botany, he lectured on and on without any sign of tiring, which turned out to be very inconvenient for the students, who were not allowed so much as a moment's recess, not even to visit the restrooms. This was just one example of the all-consuming dedication to his subject area that typified Dr. Makino.
Professor Onda's dedicated efforts to the development of the Meiji Professional School of Pharmacy were meeting with tremendous success. A forum for communication between the student body and alumni came into being with the publication of the Meiji Yakurin. And an alumni organization, the Meiyu Pharmacists Association, was formed. In 1919, the suburban campus was enhanced by the addition of five new buildings, including two of multi-story construction. Then, in 1923, the institution was accredited by the Ministry of Education as a men's professional school, and its name was changed to the Meiji Pharmaceutical Professional School. By that time, the number of pharmacists graduated by the school had reached the 3,500 mark. A celebration seemed in order. Then something happened that no one, not even Professor Onda, could possibly have anticipated. On September 1st, 1923, Tokyo was struck by an earthquake of such magnitude that it wrought death and destruction throughout the entire metropolitan area. A fire started in the storage room of the Meiji Pharmaceutical Professional School, and within moments, the new buildings were smothered in black billows of smoke. Professor Onda was emotionally devastated. This is the end, was all he could stutter as he stared at the desolated campus. The entire institution had burned to the ground and Professor Onda was left no choice but to accept defeat. He decided to officially disband the school and had notices printed to that effect. Before the notices could be handed out, however, Dr. Nagayoshi Nagai, hearing of the school's plight, rushed to the assistance of Professor Onda. Dr. Nagai was the discoverer of ephedrine and, along with Shiba Saburo Kitazato and Kiyoshi Shiga, was one of Japan's most eminent scientists and occupied the forefront of Japan's pharmaceutical field. He said to Professor Onda, I hear you're planning to disband the school. Please don't. Under no circumstances can you give up now. I'll help you as much as I can. Then Dr. Nagai, once Onda's teacher, a man who had already done much for him, wrote these words in German, the language of medical study, on a scrap of paper and gave it to his despairing friend. Gold verloren, wenig verloren. Jele verloren, viel verloren. Mut verloren, alles verloren. While the loss of gold is a small loss, the loss of honor is a great one. But when courage is lost, all is lost. As it turned out, this was just the encouragement that Professor Onda needed. Vowing to rebuild the school, he went forth on a nationwide fundraising drive. Pictured here, the clothing he wore on this crusade survives today. On a number of occasions, Dr. Nagai assisted him in his fundraising efforts. The school's alumni association also joined in the effort. Finally, as a result of generous contributions primarily from alumni, the Meiji Pharmaceutical Professional School rose from its own ashes. Out of profound gratitude to these generous alumni, Professor Onda placed an honor roll in the traditional Shinto shrine, which stood on the campus, and frequently paid his respects to the patrons named on it for their selfless efforts.
From the late 1920s through the early 1930s, students from Professor Onda's school were sent abroad to study in Europe, the fulfillment of a wish that the professor had harbored since the school's establishment. A testimony to Professor Onda's philosophy lies in the words to the school anthem he composed. Dedicated to spreading knowledge of pharmacy, we are the Meiji School of Pharmacy. Finally, in 1932, Professor Onda announced his retirement, proving that the Meiji Pharmaceutical Professional School had grown to become an institution that could stand on its own merits. Pictured here, Godo Hall was dedicated to Professor Onda, Godo being the pen name which the professor had used during his publishing career. Seen here is the birthplace of Shigenobu Onda in Matsushiro, Nagano Prefecture. Surrounded by his family, he died here in 1947 at the age of 87. He led an eventful and often trying life, marked by both disappointments and accomplishments, the greatest of which was the founding of what would become the Meiji College of Pharmacy, which he built into the foremost such institution in Japan. He fought untiringly for separation of the professions of pharmacy and medicine, acted as a spokesman for an independence movement among pharmacists, and resisted the preeminence of the medical establishment. Though fulfilled in life by the success of the Meiji Pharmaceutical Professional School, he was denied by death the opportunity to witness the separation of the professions he had long sought, a separation still sought by many of Japan's pharmacists today. This stirring testimonial by Professor Onda was recorded in 1936. Licensed pharmacists in this country already number 30,000, yet there remains not the slightest indication that our profession will be granted the legitimacy it deserves. I will soon be 76 years old. I can only hope that I live long enough to witness our independence. The Meiyaku Museum of Pharmaceutical Science and Industry here seen situated on the wooded campus, was erected in 1982 in commemoration of the 80th anniversary of the college's founding. This facility stands as a memorial to the accomplishments of Professor Onda, commemorates the history of pharmacy as well as that of the college itself, and contributes to continuing education in pharmacy. Here on the Tanashi campus, the pharmaceutical exhibit room, pride of the Meiji College of Pharmacy, contains 2,350 samples of herbal remedies and 7,500 dried medicinal plant preparations. 
The collections represent the tireless efforts of generations of Meiji College faculty. Meiji College researchers press onward with the assistance of the most modern equipment. The Meiji College of Pharmacy stands ready to meet the challenge of a new century. Its traditions continue to uphold the objectives established by Professor Shigenobu Onda. To further the study of pharmacy. To train pharmacists who will serve the community. And contribute to the health of society.